Hello, Quad Flying Fun here, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, this UMX Pits that I've got right here. Bought this off of eBay. Um, it was damaged uh, severely, actually, and I repaired it. Um, I didn't pay a lot of money for it. I think I'd give $43 for it. Um, there's a vendor on there that puts these on there. I don't know if he takes them on returns or what he does, but uh, glad he does it because I get a lot of good planes that way, and uh, I can repair them and uh, spend about a third of what I'd usually spend on one. And you can see right here, the wing had been completely broken off, and uh, they had tried to re glue it back on, and the glue that they used was not compatible with foam, and some of it had actually melted, so... I've got some good foam glue that I used. I glued this back on and then I took some uh, lightweight spackling and filled the uh, gap that was in it and uh, sanded it down and uh, repainted that and fixed that. And uh, also the nose was completely broke and you can there was a gap right here where the nose was. Um, let me see if I can work this around so we can see that. It was like right in this area right here. And I actually took this whole nose off and I used my foam glue and cut it back. It was bent and tipped, so it was angled this way. And uh, I repaired it and uh, glued that all back on and repainted it. And I uh, got it looking pretty nice. But the reason for my video today is I uh, saw on the Internet a guy that had uh, laminated these foam models with uh, this uh, lam laminating film right here. And I wanted to get some and try it. I wanted to put it on this plane since I figured... It was damaged, and I just wanted to try it out on it and see how well this stuff actually works. And I'll tell you, it is really something. Um, it strengthens these models tremendously. I mean, you can see, I can pick this model up by this wing tip here, and you have very little deflection in that wing. You can see that right there. Now, if you do that with the bottom wing that hasn't been laminated yet, look at how it bends. You know, I'm almost afraid to do it. I'm afraid I'm going to break it. And... Uh, it tremendously strengthens the uh, structure, and the neat thing was, the reason I'm putting, putting this out there is, he had shown one that he had done, and they had crashed, and you just take a heating iron, like this one, you want to put it on its lowest setting, and wherever the, uh, all it did was wrinkle it a little bit, and all he did was just take this iron and touch it to it, and it took, it was amazing, it took all the dents out, the piece straightened right back out just like it was prior to being crashed. And uh, I wanted to try that out on this plane and uh, see how it works out. Now you can see this plane is really proving to be extremely difficult because it's a biplane and I've got all of these little uh, reinforcement rods in the way here. But I'm getting it done. I mean, I've got this wing completely done here. You do, you can see it makes it really, really shiny. So for a, uh, a military model, you'd almost have to go back over it and then uh, paint the uh, laminating film a uh, flat color to, to bring it back to what you want it to be. But if I do something like that, I'm just going to get a kit and uh, start out. Actually, this, a plane like this, I'll definitely do that again because it is really difficult to get down in between here and um, get my uh, film laminated properly down in here. And actually, out here on the wings, I was just starting out and I was kind of learning how to do it. I got a few wrinkles on this wing wasn't too bad, but I got a few wrinkles on this one, but eh, no big deal. Um, this model was not in excellent shape anyway, so I'm not real concerned about it. Not, not any big deal. On this one. The next one I'll do a little bit better. I learned that uh, you have to really, when you come around a radius like this, you've really got to cut that up fine. Cut fine. Uh, it, you let it overlap about a half inch out here and then you take your scissors and you cut it like this. Well, I didn't have it cut close enough together and uh, when it folded over it, uh, it folded up on a couple spots on me. But I learned. Um, that's just, that's the reason I do this stuff so I can learn and I just pass that knowledge on to others. Now, what I'm using on this model to do this is, this is called a Pro, Pro Trim Sealing Tool. And uh, Hangar 9 makes it. I picked it up at my local uh, hobby store. And you can see it's got a very small um, iron on the end. And it has a high and a low setting. You, know, you want to use it on the low setting. The high setting is way too hot. Gets the tip up over... Uh, 230, 240 degrees, and that's too hot. You want to try to stay around. I think right now it's it's running uh, probably about 200, 210, 
which some on there say is too hot, but I had a hard time trying to get it to uh, laminate um, any lower than that. So, But you can see what I'm doing here. You start this film, you uh, tack it down in the center with this, and all you do to tack it, you know, I can just show you a little bit here, you can see that turning. Um, you see it heating up, and this is all you do. You just touch it to it like this, and you want to keep your iron moving like this all the time because if you don't it'll it'll scorch your foam but uh, and you work from the center out so when you you put your piece on you start in the center and you work your way out to the edges and that keeps it nice and uh, you don't get air bubbles or stuff in it or wrinkles now if you do happen to get an air bubble you just use a straight pin and you just poke it a few times take your sealing iron touch it to it and it, the air comes out and it this stuff shrinks when it uh, when you heat it and uh, that's what gives it that's why it pulls down and it glues down and it shrinks and it gives uh, gives it strength that way so just wanted to uh, show everybody that and uh, let them see that can't wait to get this plane in the air I've seen a lot about it uh, on the internet and I think this little plane is a superb flyer I know they've got the Beast and the P3 and all those but uh, this little plane's a good flyer too. It's got a uh, 3,000 kV motor. You can see I got the motor out of it while I'm working on it here. See if I can get this turned around where we can see it. This is the 3,000 kV motor. These take now these come with a uh, 7.4 volt uh, battery in them, and uh, I'm going to go up to a um, 3S battery, 11.1 volt in these. I've talked to another guy. They've I've seen several people flying them on uh, 11 volts and they seem to work really really well and it gives them a lot more power a lot more authority so um hope everybody liked that um I, like i said i just want to get this out there so people could see some of the stuff and uh, how you can repair these little planes they're not hard to repair you can buy them like i do um damaged and repair them fairly easily if they're in decent shape this one here was in fair shape I have to say that. But uh, anyways, if you like this and if it helps you, um, please subscribe. And until the next time, see ya. Bye.